Hey, what's going on? Daniel here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to make a video about the five misconceptions about Nigeria. What it feels like to live here as a digital nomad. At first, let me give you some background. I am Nigerian. I was born here. I was raised here. In fact, I'm in Lagos right now, which is the largest city in terms of population. Um, this is where I was born. I was raised here before I moved to a small town where I lived my later years. But I was born here in Nigeria, but I moved from Nigeria about six years ago when I was about 23 years old and I've had the opportunity to come back here about two times in the last one year and that's really given me an opportunity to look at this country from a nomad perspective from a tourist perspective a lot of the things that I took for granted in the past a lot of things that I never paid attention to now I've been paying attention to those things and it really gives me the opportunity to look at things you know just the same way that a tourist will look at them and a lot of the questions that I've gotten over time since I've been away I want to clarify that in this video if you're thinking about coming here maybe as a tourist or as a nomad I'm gonna give you my verdict at the end of this video whether or not Niger is a place for you to visit if you're a data nomad and uh, without further ado let's jump right into it first of all Niger is located in western Africa it's bordered to the west by Benin Republic to the south by the Atlantic Ocean to the north by Niger Republic and to the south I mean to the west and southwest by Cameroon. And in terms of size, Nigeria is about 2.6 times the size of Germany. Nigeria is about 36% larger than Texas. So that is still, you know, smaller than the entire United States. But you get what I mean. Nigeria is pretty big. So that's the number one misconception. Nigeria is really big, not only in terms of population, but in terms of its entertainment industry, the largest in Africa, in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of things. Nigeria is really big in terms of everything, land mass, population, and so on and so forth. Now, let's talk about the language. Now, a lot of people have asked me in the past, what language do you speak? Because I speak English and I speak a local language. Do you speak Nigerian? No, let me first correct the notion that there's anything called Nigerian. There isn't, there's nothing called Nigerian. In fact, in Nigeria, there are three major ethnic groups. That's the Yoruba, Hausa, and the Igbo. Now, I happen to be from the Yoruba, Yoruba ethnic group in the Southwestern region that goes as far as South America. But this video is an history video. You can go read that up on Google. But we speak the Yoruba language, like Ekaro, Ekuli, Ekabo, Shutijeo, Mutijeo, Mufeloson, Shutiji things of that nature, right? But there's three other major ethnic languages that you can speak in Nigeria, which is the Igbo and the Aosas. And now there are subdivisions of that language, about 250 of them, ethnic dialects that you can speak within Nigeria. So there's nothing like Nigerian. It's either you speak Aosa, you speak Igbo, or you speak Yoruba. So that's the common misconception about Nigeria. So if you come into Nigeria, you will be able to get along pretty easily because pretty much everyone, I mean, I'm not gonna say everyone, but most people can at least speak some decent English. If they cannot speak back to you, they will at least understand what you're trying to say. If you stay in the major areas in Lagos and in some you know, smaller cities around there. But even if you don't know English or they don't know English, there's also something called the Pigeon English, which is like a broken version of English that combines the local dialects with English language. So if someone tells you, how are you day? That is, how are you? You don't chop meaning have you eaten so chop is like to eat something to, i mean to chop something up so that's the common misconception about language if you don't speak any of the local languages you will be able to get by to some uh, uh i mean to some extent you know by speaking some form of english or by speaking pigeon english so if you're here as a tourist or as a digital nomad you wouldn't have any real problems especially if you are in the big city like lagos now let's go to the third misconception which is infrastructure now a lot of you guys, if you've never been to Nigeria before, maybe you've just seen some documentary about Africa. A lot of the things you see will be things, you know, will be infrastructure that's not really up to par. Maybe, you know, they show you Hudson, people living in Hudson, in small houses and things of that nature. Of course, there are things like that in Nigeria. In fact, if you go to the northern parts of Nigeria, if you go to remote towns, remote villages, you will be able to find those kind of things. But the general population, most of Nigerians do not live in this type of situations. For example, I'm in Lagos right now. This is where I've been for the last two months. I've, I mean, I lived here my whole life. I grew up here. I mean, hardly would you find anything, uh, you know, related to whatever you've seen in the documentaries or in Western news channels. Nigeria is pretty developed. If you are in a city like Lagos, Ibadan, uh, Potakot, Abuja, Kano, Kaduna, 
these are cities that are very much developed you will find internet good roads hospitals of course it's not as developed as what you would find in say america canada or in the majority of europe right but in terms of infrastructure if you come in here as a tourist you will you know you can be rest assured that things are not as bad as the western media make it seem so infrastructure wise nigeria is pretty solid on that front of course you know a lot of things still need some upgrades you know we still have bad roads we still have you know a poor health system system and things of that nature as is you know the majority of African countries I mean we have our own issues but if you come in here know that pretty much a lot of you know the places that you'll be going to I mean unless you want to go very deep into the remote areas will be uh, will have some decent infrastructure so that's not going to be a problem so that's the third misconception about Nigeria is the infrastructure but I must tell you that I mean sometimes if you're working remotely internet can be a big pain in the butt but you can pretty much get by do your calls i've been able to do that well i've been here for the last two months some days i have issues but most of the time i'm not having any of this problem so infrastructure you should be good on that front now let's talk about the people what are the people like under this misconception i'm going to be talking about entrepreneurship i'm going to be talking about entertainment the music scene what the attitudes are like are they nice people are they good people are they bad people now if you've read anything about african African countries, especially from Western media, the common consensus, the general consensus is that Africa is a dangerous place to be in. But as a Nigerian, as someone who's lived here my whole life before I moved away a couple of years ago, I can tell you that that could not be further from the truth. If you're coming to Nigeria, you will be safe. I mean, of course, if you go up to the north, there's some you know, insecurity going on there with the terrorism, Boko Haram, Iswap, and all of these things. They pretty much happen. But as someone who's lived here my entire life, I can tell you as a matter of fact that I have never been involved in those kind of things I've never seen it with my own eyes of course that's not to say that it doesn't happen but if you want to come here of course you want to stay around the general places that are deemed safe you want to stay around Lagos especially in the southwest of Nigeria or some southeastern parts or maybe the capital city in Abuja so these are the places you want to go to but if you are feeling a little bit adventurous maybe you want to step out of your comfort zone a little bit then you might you know be wanting to go into remote parts where you are less likely to be um, you know to be safe but that's still not to say that you know something bad is going to happen to you because generally Nigerian people are very kind people we are very hospitable we love to take care of people to take care of you know foreigners especially you know if we see that you've never been here before everybody wants to be kind to you they want to host you they want to feed you and things of this nature so Nigeria is one of the most hospitable places that I know and that's not because I'm from here maybe a little bit of bias in there but I can tell you from what I've heard from you know the people I've talked to have been here my friends uh, other people that I've watched online who's come to Nigeria they can tell you as a matter of fact the Nigerian people are the kindest people most hospitable people they've ever come across and that is the general consensus being someone from here who's lived here my entire life and seen the way that we treat foreigners so a common misconception is that you know, Nigeria is a dangerous place people are unkind they want to scam you and all of this things but what I'm saying is you know one bad apple can spoil the bunch and I'm not gonna say that things like that do not happen but the general population most of the people are very kind and they want to be nice they want to be you know hospitable and they want to treat you with kindness so Nigerian people are kind if you're thinking about coming here please do it now let's talk about insecurity is Nigeria safe is it dangerous is it a dangerous place to go i kind of alluded to this in one i mean early in this video and just like any place you go to that isn't your home country of course there's going to be concerns about security and one of the things about nigeria is that as Nigeria is so big. Nigeria is so vast, right? If you go to the north, it's like an entirely different country versus coming to the, I mean, to the south. And the majority of you know the insecurity that we experience in Nigeria is mainly happening in the north because you know every region's got its own issues. But if you want to come to Nigeria, I would advise personally that you stay around the southwest, southeast. You know, you know around general. Generally, you should stay around the south because that is 
much more safe than going to the north. So if you want to come to Nigeria, do not go to the north. Or maybe you want to go to the north, but just make sure that you have someone who's going to guide you and you know exactly where you're going. You don't just want to go wandering around and just, you know, going up the beaten path in the, I mean, in northern Nigeria. You do not want to do that. But in terms of insecurity, I've lived here my entire life. I've, I mean, I'm in Lagos right now. Insecurity is not something you should be worried about, especially if you know people here. Um, I would advise that if you're coming to Nigeria, you should know someone. You should, uh, uh, you know, get in touch with a local who can guide you, can take you places and, you know, just, you know, serve as, you know, a second pair of eyes, you know, wherever you want to go. So generally, Nigeria can be very safe, especially if you go to these places that I've mentioned. But the places you want to stay away from are like the northeastern parts, the northwestern parts, and, you know, generally some areas of the northern parts of Nigeria that you don't want to go to. But generally, I would say that Nigeria is really safe. I mean, I live here and, you know, as a foreigner, of course, you want to stay away, you know, from the dangerous parts, you know, whatever you read online, it can be true. But if you have a local here who can guide you, who can take you around, they will give you way more information that you could ever find online. So generally, I would say Nigeria is safe and that's just a common misconception that Nigeria is dangerous and you shouldn't come here. So after saying all of these things, when all is said and done, what is my verdict about being a digital nomad in Nigeria? Should you come to Nigeria's Nigeria, a place that you can work from as a digital nomad? One, if you just want to come to Nigeria as a tourist, just want to have a good time, you want to party, you want to you know, make friends and just have a good time. I would say Nigeria is the place to come to, especially in December, because this is where it's happening. We have the biggest artist in Africa, biggest music scene, the biggest entertainment scene. Nigeria is really good for that if you want to spend time here. But I would say as a data nomad, if you want to work here for an extended period of time, I wouldn't really recommend it because as a nomad myself, I've had my own challenges about working here in Nigeria sometimes. Internet can be a pain in the ass, like I said, um, you know, sometimes electricity can be gone for three days in fact I've just experienced that in the last three days and I made some important calls so if you want to come here as a digital nomad I wouldn't really recommend it to stay here you know longer than a few weeks at a time but if you want to have fun as a tourist I would definitely definitely recommend Nigeria it's a field with a lot of you know vibrant people creative people you know a lot of these people are my friends some of the people who are you know creating awesome businesses here really making it good so Nigeria generally on a scale of 1 to 10 as a tourist I would say Nigeria ranks up there as an 8 as a digital nomad I would give Nigeria about 4 over 10 because it's really lacking in some of the things that I really would like as a digital nomad myself so that is my verdict about Nigeria pros and cons my verdict as a, as a digital nomad and I hope this video has been helpful to you if it has consider liking this video, consider subscribing and drop a comment or questions. If you have that, I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and follow me on Instagram if you want to connect with me personally. So my name is Daniel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.